Hey, welcome to Mama Do. Hope you're doing well. Just to give you um, an update, it's been a long time since I put up the the very wobbly video um, saying that I was going to be screened for cladribe, Maven clad, and um, I've been waiting because you can't have any active infections when you take that specific medication. So I had my screening, then there was a time period where I had to wait just for things to level out with um, hospitals, COVID, there was a backlog with um, medication, there was a backlog with the pharmacy, I think it's help at home or something like that, or healthcare at home, which provide the medication. Then we were getting towards the end of 2021 and then Christmas came <clears throat> and then I developed a throat infection, meaning that I couldn't take it so I had to hold off. Then that cleared up with antibiotics, then I had a sinus infection, then I got Covid, then it was Christmas. Because of the type of medication cladribine is, you can't have any active infections in your body. So I'm having to be re-screened again. And <clears throat> the screening that I went for originally was you go and see your MS nurses. My MS nurse is a different nurse to the team I went to see um, at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. But I sat down with them and they went through everything. And I mean everything to do with um, cladribine and side effects, the way you take it, your past history of medication, your past history of immunizations, your <clears throat> past history of illnesses and anything that could reoccur with this particular medication. For example, if you've ever had chicken pox in the past, which I have, when I was little I had chicken pox, this medication can, um, can't think of the word, reactivate that virus, not in the same form of chicken pox, but it can reactivate in the, um, in the, the signs of shingles. So she went through all of that. They were absolutely amazing. I can't thank them enough. They spent so much time with me. Um, and you also have to have blood tests, which I'm gonna have to have again now. And I've got my form with me because I'm just gonna go through what, what, they, what they test for and what they mean. Now, I have to say it again as a disclaimer, but you know that I'm not medically trained. I'm not a doctor, I'm not um, an MS nurse. Um, I don't have any medical background whatsoever. So this is just me for myself looking up what these particular blood tests are and what they screen for. Just for a um, personal knowledge experience, I think that if you're either taking any medication or you're having blood tests done, it's really helpful for you to understand what they're, what they're for, especially if you've got an ongoing illness um, that you... You're going to be treated for. I say I've got everything here because my memory I never remember stuff. Okay, so when you have your screening for um, cladribine or Maven clad, this is what they'll screen for: urea and electrolytes, which is basically kidney function, kidney function, to make sure your kidneys are functioning properly. Um, they'll do LFT, which is your liver function, to make sure your liver's functioning properly. They test for gamma GT which is a new one for me. So gamma GT is an enzyme mostly found in, live, in your liver and high levels of gamma GT could show liver disease. Um, next one they scan for or test for is C-reactive. Is that right? C-reactive protein. So C-reactive protein is produced by the liver and can show active inflammation in your body. Um, they do a full blood count, which is to establish the number and size 
of your red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and dependent on the number and size, that could indicate an infection within your body. Um, the other one that they test for is ESR. So erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So that tests for the degree of indirect inflammation present in your body. So basically they're just making sure that your body is working well, that you've got no inflammation and no current inflammation and no infection <clears throat> within your body because this particular medication lowers your immunity. <clears throat> so from what they from what they told me when <coughs> when I was sat with them <coughs> sorry when they told me what they told me when I was sat with them is that your immune system is stored in your lymph glands and anything that you've had previously that you've built up antibodies for will be stored in those lymph glands in your body so when you take this medication you should still be able to fight off any infection or any virus that you've had previously so say for example the chickenpox i couldn't get chickenpox again my body would recognize that infection and fight it off but it can switch around and turn into shingles um, but you don't lose the, the medication doesn't make you lose your um, your immune system that's already stored in your body it only reduces your immune system for the time period of what's going around your body at that time where you're taking those tablets. That's the way it was explained to me. Okay, so when I was there as well, <clears throat> I went through obviously my past history and all different medications, if I was pregnant, if I was planning on having another child because for men and women, you can't, get pregnant whilst you're taking this medication because it could be harmful to the baby, to the fetus. There's just not enough evidence to, to suggest that it's, it's okay to have um, a baby um, conceive, be pregnant, breastfeed, that type of thing. Um, and then when I was there, they gave me this booklet. So I don't know if you can see that. So getting started with Maven Clad. There's two names, there's Cladrabine and Maven Clad. Uh, they're both the same thing. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just gonna go through this for you, just in case you've never, never come across this medication, you haven't got one of these books. I'll go through it briefly with you. Um, so basically it says, the way it works is so your immune system is made up of certain type of white blood cells and they're T cells and B cells and those T cells and B cells are thought to be involved in the abnormal immune response with MS so cladribine works by temporarily lowering the numbers of those T and B cells so that there are fewer of them attacking the nervous system, which reduces the inflammation and damage associated with MS symptoms and long-term disability. And it says here, although cladribine spares many cell types involved in fighting infections, the reduction in T and B cells may increase likelihood of some infections. 
So it's got, um, I'll tell you the percentages there that, I don't know whether you can see that, it's probably too bright. So I'll tell you the percentages now. So in the um, clinical trials, relapses. So in a clinical trial lasting two years, the effectiveness of cladribine compared with a placebo was a 67% reduction in relapses. So, <clears throat> and that's in, yeah, so 67% fewer relapses per year for people on cladribine compare, compared to people on a placebo. So 67% to me is quite high in the research that I've done it with lots of MS medication. It's not the highest percentage. I think the, from what my neurologist said, the, the higher the percentage reduction comes with more side effects to your body. In the trial also, it says that 95%, 95%, that's a really high percentage of patients treated with cladribine did not experience progression of their disability during years one and two. I've got a list here of things, which it says that you need to tell your MS team or your neurologist if you're pregnant breastfeeding or planning on becoming pregnant, if you have any allergies, you have any kidney or liver problems, you're taking any other medicines, you currently have or have had an infection including HIV, TB, hepatitis B or C. You have ever had shingles or chickenpox or you've recently had a vaccination or you are undergoing treatment for cancer or you've previously had cancer. Um, so the next page is dosing. So one of the reasons why I chose this medication was because of the frequency that you take this medication and that's purely down to my lifestyle <clears throat> not that I've got anything crazy going on I don't go out to many places I don't go partying you know all that type of stuff I have a little I have a little boy that I have to look after he's at nursery today he started nursery not that long back but this is the reason why you're seeing me in my house instead of my car for once um <clears throat> but it Sometimes I just don't think that I would be able to go for an infusion every every month um, with a little one, especially with the, the types of side effects that you can get from those infusions with my husband going to work for, uh, full time as well. Um, so this one suits my particular lifestyle and, and family. So you take cladribine for two years in month one and month two. So it goes like this, year one, month one, you have four to five days worth of treatment depending on you as a person and your weight. In year one, month two, you have again four to five days treatment in tablet form. So the tablets are sent to you and you take those tablets. <coughs> in month one and month two. Next year, the following year, you do the same again. So in month one, you'd have four to five days worth of tablets. In month two, you'd have four to five days worth of tablets. And then that's it. No further treatment in year three, no further treatment in year four. Now, cladribine is a certain medication which you can't touch with your skin. And if it drops on a surface, <clears throat> you've got to clean those surfaces really well. It's a cytotoxic medication, so it can burn. Um, so a lot of people that I've spoken to have been on this medication, put like they, they pop the tablets out of the packet into a glass so it can't go anywhere and you haven't touched it. And then they'll use that glass to pop the tablet in their mouth and then drink some, some water and take that tablet. Another thing with 
cladribine that you have to make sure that you do is you can't take any other medication or supplement for three hours before you take your cladribine and for three hours after. So you have to have, there's a six hour window. So if you're in any other medication, which I know that some people are, I also take other medication. A lot of them are, are supplements. I also take a tablet called amantadine, which is to help with my chronic fatigue. So side effects, <coughs> the side effects that are listed in this book I'll, um, I'll read them out for you. So this is this is a side effects from the the manufacturer's book of Mavenclad, which is exactly the same as Cladribine. Some of these things I can't pronounce very well. Um, so lymphophenia is a side effect. So lymphophenia is a decrease in white blood cell count in the bloodstream and lymphocytes have an important role in the immune system so not it's saying that not all patients develop lymphopenia and to lower your risk you'll have blood test screening before you take it in year one and year two at two months and six months after each treatment course so that's what that's what your screening is during the time that you're you're taking the medication is to make sure that your lymphocyte count is an appropriate level. So the next side effect is shingles, which is also known as the herpes zoster virus caused by the same virus as chickenpox. So the early warning signs of shingles are headache, burning, tingling, numbness or itching of the skin, feeling generally unwell or a fever um, and the first symptom is usually a small area or localised band of severe pain followed by a rash that can develop into itchy blisters. Um, <clears throat> also you have um, an increased risk of severe infections because of the reduced lymphocyte levels in your body. Um, that's another reason why they screen your blood to measure the number of cells which fight infections in your body, to make sure that they don't fall too low. Um, the next risk, which is one, <coughs> One that I was really concerned about um, when going through these different medications and choosing one, choosing one to take, because this particular medication in the in the information that's given to you, they say that it has it comes with a cancer risk. Um, so it says here, single events of cancer have been observed in patients who have received cladribine in clinical studies. And this is one that I questioned with the MS team because it was really scary to me because I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have what I have and then add to it. I want to have what I have and try and reduce what I'm experiencing. Now, I was assured by the questions that I asked the, the MS team when they were going through the, the screening and telling me all the information about it, that they had never witnessed or experienced anybody personally that had developed cancer from taking cladribine. And when I did some more research on the internet about it, the, um, the risks that I found on the internet, the percentages 
of developing cancer whilst taking cladribine were the same percentages as it would be on any normal day, time, without taking medication. So that kind of put my right mind at rest, that the, the, um, the percentage chance of me developing cancer whilst taking cladribine would be the same percentage chance of me developing cam cancer without taking the medication. <clears throat> but you have to quite look quite deep into different studies and, and read a lot of a lot of information to to get that uh, to get that information. The other the other side effect of this medication, which is the same same side effect as you would have if you were taking Cybre, if you were taking Ocrevus, is PML. And this is a really difficult one for me to say. So progressive multifocal leukinocephalopathy. I'm so sorry if you know what that is. And I've said it really, really badly. <clears throat> so anyway, PML. And PML is a, it's a difficult one because it's quite a bad side effect. <clears throat> so PML is a rare brain infection caused by a virus, JC virus, that can occur in patients who take medicines, medicines which reduce the activity of the immune system. PML is a serious condition which may result in severe disability or death. Though no cases, no cases of PML have been observed in MS patients who took cladribine, it cannot be excluded that such cases may occur in the future. So basically they're saying that it could occur. They're aware that they're aware that people taking medication that completely lowers their immune system, completely lowers their lymphocytes in their body, can develop this PML infection. But there's no cases being found of it with people taking this medication. But they know about it, so they're warning you. Um, the difficult thing which I've read <clears throat> time and time again with PML is that the symptoms, it says it in here as well, so the symptoms of PML may be similar to those of an MS attack. So the symptoms of PML could include weakness, changes in mood or behaviour, memory lapses, speech and communication difficulties. Um, and you'll probably know that some of those on that list, or, or if not all of them on that list that you've experienced with, with MS on a, a daily, weekly, yearly basis. So it's important that we know, you know this information, to just be aware of it. Also, it's important that you share this information with your husband, your wife, your partner, someone that you live with, your mom, your dad, sister brother because sometimes you can't always notice changes in yourself sometimes other people notice changes in you or behavior changes in you before you do so it's really important to share this information with anybody anybody that's close to you anybody who spends a lot of time with you because they can help you you know distinguish what's going on if you're if you're experiencing something something new or, or crazy that you need to report to the hospital um, and that's it for this um, this booklet it just it also goes through um, your dosage tracker so it's got I don't know if you can see on there but it's got it's got a little table <clears throat> We all know that with um, with MS, 
your memory can be better some days. It can be non-existent on some days. It can change throughout the day. It's good in these booklets that they give you a table and a schedule and a place to tick and put a date because I would never remember. So I would definitely be using this to make sure that I'm taking my tablets properly on the days that I'm meant to be taking them. So I've got my screening booked in for next week for my blood tests. Hopefully, fingers crossed, after having a throat infection, a sinus infection and COVID, keep your fingers crossed too that this, um, these blood tests will come back okay, saying that I've got no inflammation, no active um, infection in my body so that they can trigger the healthcare at home people to send me this medication so I can get started with it. And um, as soon as we get to that point, I will let you know, I will keep you updated um, with any side effects. I'll, for the, for the first tablet I take, I will, I will get the, the camera out and let you see what the medication looks like, how it's packaged, and I'll let you know how easy it is to take. <laughs> I'm not very good at swallowing tablets. Um, when I was little, I choked on a boiled sweet when I was about 10. And um, and that just freaked me out with taking tablets. So I I know they say you shouldn't, but I chew a lot of tablets, but I can't, I can't do that with this one. So I'm gonna have to train myself to swallow a tablet. There are some tricks that I found on the internet from different Facebook groups of people who take this medication where they will put the tablet in yogurt and drink the yogurt because the, the, the yogurt's thicker so it, it can't maybe trick your, your throat in to be able to swallow it. Anyway, um, I'll keep you updated and if there's anything as usual that you want to know um, that you don't feel that I've explained um, or anything that you're you're concerned about or worried about or you want me to do a video about just either comment below or email me and um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can sorry to the people who have messaged me which I haven't messaged back yet purely because I've had three months of not feeling very well at all with different infections and um, so I'll get back to you guys soon and yeah, that's it. So for now, stay healthy. See you soon.